Hello, in this video I want to look at Jelaine Maxwell and what might be behind the person she turned out to be, it seems, or maybe I should say allegedly. On the one hand, people are saying she is a scapegoat, she hasn't really done anything, and it's Maxwell who did the bad things and we all want to blame someone. Well, when I say people, it's basically just her brothers and the defence. <laughs> but listening to the witnesses, they seem pretty sure that Jelaine was um, very much involved in recruiting them um, to be abused by Maxwell and that she also took part in the abuse and that she enjoyed humiliating them. Robert and Betty Maxwell didn't give Jelaine much attention when she was little because her brother had been in a car accident and was then in a coma for seven years before he died. And apparently when she was three years old, she said, mummy, I exist which seems a bit weird to me because I don't think many three-year-olds would know the word exist. <laughs> so I think they might have sort of added a bit to that story. But, um, but nevertheless, they're saying that she hadn't been given enough attention and then they both felt really guilty when she made them aware of that. Robert Maxwell was born in what's now the Ukraine. At the time, it was Czechoslovakia. And Hungary took over that region. And then it was subsequently taken over by the Nazis. Robert had six siblings and he was born into a Jewish family. He managed to um, go to France before the Holocaust started and he was okay, he survived but most of his family didn't. He said that he felt really guilty that he was the survivor. He ended up going to England and he was in the British Army. He changed his name to Robert Maxwell before he had a Yiddish name um, and he became a media tycoon and made tons of money. He had a 53 room mansion so he was absolutely loaded and the family he came from had been very poor. So it was like he was trying to make up for that. And he was also trying to make up for the family he lost because they had nine children. And, uh, you know, and that was what he and his wife said, that it was to recreate his family. I imagine having most of your family murdered would make you pretty skeptical about people. If you don't trust people, if you think that you've got to watch out because they could target you at any time, um, then, then why would you be trustworthy yourself? Because there's no real bond there with those people, you know, so why, why be loyal to them? We know that Robert Maxwell was trying to rip people off their pensions. He was doing all this fraudulent activity. During the Holocaust, it was the people who broke the law, the Jewish people who uh, didn't abide by the laws, didn't hand themselves in, you know, maybe they didn't even wear the Jewish star. They went into hiding and so on. They managed to get illegal papers drawn up. It was those people who survived. So the law was not to be trusted. The law was about um, targeting you and um, murdering you and your loved ones. So, you know, you can imagine how somebody might lose respect for the law if that's what was going on when you were young. I need to just rely on myself and make my own rules and I need to be a survivor. His family had been really poor. He apparently didn't have a pair of shoes until he was seven years old. So maybe one way of being a survivor was to make lots of money. I don't know if that was about making, making something of himself because he had all this pressure on himself to be a success since the rest of the family or most of them were gone. I don't know if it was that or if it was again about survival. He had to keep doing all he could to be strong and safe, you know, and making lots of money might have been a way of doing that in his mind. Even before that time in Czechoslovakia, there was a lot of um, anti-Semitism. So even as he was growing up, I imagine he may well have felt different. The opposite of being the odd one out who's looked down on by others is being someone special who stands out, who's famous, you know, who everyone respects. 
threats. And that's what ended up happening with him before all the fraudulent activity became well known about. I don't know much about her relationship with her mother, except that her mother's life was about her father. So I expect because of that, she probably didn't have a lot of attention from her mum. She kept all of these press clippings about him so many that the book was incredibly heavy, apparently. And then after he died, when she found out the truth about him, instead of being angry that she actually had no money and they weren't billionaires, um, she devoted her life to, um, to looking into the, his Jewish family and to um, talking about the Holocaust to people. So her whole life really, since she met him, was all about him. Something similar happened with his children because apparently with Jelaine, when she was little and she said whatever those words really were <laughs> that made them think, oh gosh, we've been ignoring her, uh, he absolutely doted on her. According to Betty, he spoiled her. And I read that this was because she reminded him of himself. So if that's true, then again, it was all about him. And, uh, you know, and his children worked for his business. And, and it makes me think that Jelaine, who had um, been neglected for, for the earliest years of her life, well, that's, those are the most important years um, when you're traumatised, which if you're severely neglected, you will have been traumatised. Her brother Ian says she was ignored until the age of five. Um, the younger you are, the more of an impact that's going to have on you as an adult. Um, so, and she, since she was so young, I imagine that it did impact on her a lot. And when she did get that attention from her dad, that it would have been incredibly important to her. Uh, there were two sisters and her mum, and yet the boat was named after her. So it seems that she won, you know, that she managed to get the most attention from him. Her father would apparently bully and humiliate one child in front of the others every week over Sunday lunch and he would endlessly compare them. Julia Langdon, the political editor of The Mirror, who worked under him for five years, said he was very bombastic, very prone to flattery, very vain. And Betty, his wife, described him as bullying, unfaithful, and frequently absent. And he told his daughter Anne she was ugly. On the other hand, Jelaine was pretty. She was also targeted less. Not getting the attention because of another sibling and then suddenly being spoiled and treated differently from the others could teach a child to believe that there's not enough love to go around. Love is a competition you have to win. So you need to stand out and offer something no one else is offering. Narcissists didn't develop emotionally beyond early childhood because they didn't get the love they needed at that age. They got attention not for who they were, but for how they pleased their parent by doing something well. So Jelaine's childhood provided just the right environment for the creation of a narcissist. After Maxwell died by falling off his yacht, Ken Lennox, the Mirror's senior photographer, says, Jelaine flew in. She was really, really upset. You could tell this was daddy's girl. She was inconsolable. She could hardly speak. When she saw her mother, her knees just buckled. She was really devastated. And then he says he would take her to events. Elton John's birthday, football matches, she was always there, clinging on to him. She called him my daddy all the time. And I expect she would have learnt to be whoever she was supposed to be to get the maximum amount of attention from him. She was the face of his business. And, uh, you know, so that was a really important role. And so if you think about it, her work life was about promoting her dad, promoting this person who, um, you know, she really needed this affection from. So when he died and when the public were against him because they discovered that he'd been ripping people off so much and, um, and all this illegal activity, <laughs> Um, at that point, you know, she stood up for him and it was a very painful experience for her because this hero dad was being mocked by everyone. And so I imagine that would have made her really angry and maybe made her feel quite small and um, like 
she had something that she needed to prove and she also needed to um, she needed to replace her father. She needed what she'd got from him from somebody else. When Jelaine met Epstein, I can imagine that she would have had a similar approach as the one that she'd learned in childhood. Pleasing him and giving him what he wanted would have been really important to her. Um, a feeling of it's us against the world. You know, that loyalty is important. I, I expect that that's something her dad would have felt. Loyalty to family is everything. Her brothers are backing her up now, you know, and saying that she hasn't done anything wrong. From what I've read, it sounds like she was very much in love with him even after their relationship had ended, that her love for him never did end. So, um, and, and he had picked her up, you know, when she was in pieces after her father died. So he was her hero, her new hero. But I expect that that desire to hunt down um, a young girl, like a, you know, really a predator, and lure them in, and then um, degrade them and humiliate them with the abuse, whether she was taking part in it or whether she knew that Epstein would be, in both cases, this was, it seems to me, part of this ruthless, competitive um, personality, you know, that, um, that, uh, that if you think about it, you know, if you're in love with someone who's not interested in you and he likes younger women, well, you could be upset about that. Depending on how insecure you are as a person, you could be very jealous. Um, but for her, she didn't need to be because these women that he wanted were going to be degraded now. So she could get her anger out about the way that he wanted them rather than her um, by knowing they'd be abused and joining in on the abuse. And that was her way, I expect, of feeling like she was still superior. A source close to Jelaine Maxwell said, when I asked what she thought of the underage girls, she looked at me and said, they're nothing, these girls, they're trash. This person goes on to say, Jelaine was in love with Jeffrey the way she was in love with her father. She always thought that if she did one more thing for him to please him, he would marry her. She gave him something he needed, just like she'd given her dad something he needed. She was doing the same for Epstein. She had the network, you know, she knew all the people he needed to know. So there was something special about her that was necessary for him, you know. She could feel needed and special. And in the same way, she could feel like that for him sexually. Even if she wasn't enough for him, she was still giving him what he needed sexually. This is something that you can see in a lot of families. Thank God you don't see it to this, this horrific degree. That both partners may be narcissists you know, that both of them are so into themselves, um, but one is more independent and the other is more codependent. And the codependent narcissist can end up doing just as much harm as the independent one, you know, in order to please the independent one, in order to show them that they need them, because that person doesn't have any natural feeling like that. They don't tend to need people in that way. They just use people and move on. So I'm gonna leave it here. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.